Jo here from the Minecraft Alliance and welcome back to a series that I bet you guys thought, oh he's not doing this anymore. Well no, I am back with another podcast guys. It's been, it's only been what, a year since the last one? In fact, it has been exactly a year. Uh, I have scheduled this video to come out on the 27th of September 2020, which is exactly one year after the last episode did. So how have you guys been? I know it's been a bit of a crazy year for all of us. Um, very crazy. Obviously, as I'm sure you all know, a lot has happened since we last spoke, uh, and I've got a lot to talk to you guys about. And I've honestly missed doing this. I just haven't quite found the time to do it. And I'll be talk. I'll talk a bit more about that and how my year has been probably the shittest year of my life. And I don't mind saying the past year has been probably since back, probably since March. March to now has probably been the shittiest year of my life. I have so much to talk about both this week and I'm probably going to do a podcast either later in the week or next week sort of talk more about the more recent times because basically it's been a year I've got so much to try and fill you guys in on so I, I don't know what else to say but I guess we should probably just get into it. By the way if you want to check out the previous episodes of this there will be a link to the playlist in the description below. That might be a lie but there should be one on the end screen at the end of the video. If there's not, then I couldn't be bothered to go through my Chrome app to do my to the end screen because it's very tedious to do on a um, on a mobile phone. And funny enough, I still haven't got much in run and sorted. But that's a topic for a later discussion. 2020. Well, first of all, what about the last three months of 2019? I mean, back when life was pretty good, actually. Like. Thinking it for it, the funny thing is, I was going to play Minecraft like I normally used to do when I made these podcasts. Um, but actually, let me tell you about this a bit. First podcast I did, I actually just, because I, I actually filmed the very first podcast I made at my dad's house. So I literally just sat in front of the, in, uh, at my dad's table and basically talked to myself for an hour. And for half an hour, not doing anything, mainly because I didn't have my Xbox. Then more recently, I had two episodes, two and three, and I think four as well, I used, I played Minecraft. But... Um, yeah, actually, if I'm not going to play Minecraft, I'm going to pull up YouTube because I want to look at my YouTube channel and see what we've done in the past year because it's been pretty mad. But anyway, yeah, so last September, fantastic year, obviously, as you know, if you remember listening to my last podcast, we went, uh, actually, I had to listen to part of my, pod, my last podcast recently. Uh, but as you may or may not know, we kind of found a bit of a trek around the place. We were going around looking for uh, things to buy, basically, for my birthday because it was. Of course, my birthday fairly recently. Uh, at the time, uh, I, as you can imagine, my birthday is on the fifth of September. My nineteenth birthday has just passed. Um, no one here as good as my twenty and my eighteenth, sorry, because of obviously COVID. Um, but let's jump back in time to a time where I think we can all agree life was just better. It was much nicer. It was much more enjoyable. Um, and quite honestly, in my opinion, life was just generally better than it is now. And I know that sounds bad, but I think we can all agree that this year's just been a bit shit, really. Uh, anyway, yeah, so, really, end of September, not really much interesting happened. Not really much happening, interesting happening in October last year, either, to be honest, as far as I can remember. Like I say, it's been so long, I could be completely forgetting about something massive that happened to me that felt massive at the time. But given everything else that's happened in 2020 this year, that kind of feels inconsequential and not really a, a big deal if that makes any sense but anyway so 2020 or the end of 20 i keep trying to jump to talk about 2019 2020 so we'll get to it very soon 2019 uh october was an okay month sort of just chill have halloween enjoying studying at school still studying my media it and business uh get, trying to get ready for my exams in january then um uh, November, nothing really interesting happened. I had a five-day weekend because I managed to... Basically, at school, we used to have... Um, I say we used to because obviously I'm not at my school anymore. We used to have um, free periods. And we could take a, what, five day, five free periods equivalent to a day off. Uh, so we just didn't have to be on school. At, I keep wanting to say on campus now. I'm quite so used to talking in uni language. And I've only been at uni for two weeks. Um, we didn't have to be in school. Uh, we could just basically be at home chilling or doing whatever. We were supposed to be at home studying, but I never did because of reasons that I will explain in a minute. And uh, what I did was because my three days were 
Thursday, my free days were Thursday and Monday. So normally I'd take a Monday off and I'd stay late on a Friday and work and basically do the work I would do on a Monday at home, which I can't, couldn't, at school on the Friday night and stay usually till about eight, nine o'clock and then go home. Usually I'd be the last person at school and I'd actually sometimes be shooed out by the caretaker because I'd be at school that late. Um, but yeah, then, then what happened? Yeah, so basically, uh, the Friday, we had a teacher training down the Friday, and I think it was Black Friday, it always weirdly works out to be Black Friday, uh, and we had a teacher training there, so basically, I if I looked at the timetable ahead, I saw I could take the first day off the week before, and the Monday off the next week, uh, and then that way I could, you know, I could basically have a five day weekend, and I went and spoke to a pastoral person, the person that I would request this from, and I pointed this out to her and asked if I could have it, and she was like, you are very clever, yes you can. So I was like, yes, get in. Uh, and I remember the Wednesday night, I was sitting, because uh, I decided to do what I would normally do on a Friday on the Wednesday, I was sitting working in the common room, and uh, that that lady I was talking about and the sixth form head of my media teacher came out, and she was telling the sixth form head about what I'd done, uh, what I'd arranged, and he just looked at me and was like, you clever Matt, you clever person. I want to say sod, but I don't think he called me a sod, because that seems like something a teacher wouldn't do even after that hours. But he was like, you are very clever, and I was like, thank you. Maybe that boosted my thinking a little bit too much. To be, to be honest, thinking about times where I, I was praised is nice, because I haven't really felt praised that much recently. That's not anyone particular's fault, it's just not really been anyone to praise me because of COVID and everything. So that happened, um, then December came, I did my mocks. I, there was, also there was a general election, which Mr. Brightbox here decided, oh, we'll find out, the general election is the day before one of my, my last mock. And I really wanted to stay up and watch the results as they unfold, folded. So what did Mr. Brightspark do? I stayed up and watched the results. I did fall asleep at about two, but woke up again at about four, so I didn't get much sleep the night before the mock. Funny thing though. After two, that was a medium. It was a medium mock. And funny enough, that was the media exam that I normally struggled in. So I was like, oh no, that's probably a bad idea. But I was very interested in staying up and seeing how things unfolded. Funnily enough, I did better in that paper than I did in the one where I got better sleep. How that worked, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, that happened. Then Christmas happened. I went and spent it at my dad's. Uh, one of the last big things I did at my dad's actually, because I haven't been to my dad's for a while. Um, it was great fun, saw all the family, saw all of um, my dad's fiance's grandchildren. One of them, the, we discovered a really weird thing that basically one of them is five years younger than me, the other is five years younger, there's another one that's five years younger than her, and there's another that's five years younger than her. So it's like this really weird sort of, like, stepladder. It's quite weird. And then there's some that are like two years younger, there's two that are two years younger, so yeah because my dad's fiance's uh my dad's fiance has five grandchildren when i first met her she had two but since she you now has three more so that's uh five in total but yeah we had a nice christmas we got to the point where um one of them had a headache and so they were just sitting upstairs with one of the with the second oldest watching uh, Eldie Shadow Daily videos actually and I went upstairs to put something in my back or in my room and I, I heard Minecraft coming from the other room and I, I, I put my head and I was like what's going on in here then and I actually ended up just sitting watching Minecraft with them so me and the, these the two of them were sitting watching Eldie Shadow Daily videos actually I, I now learned I've now learned some of them were Small Beans videos because they were the Bill versus videos if any of you are Small Beans or Eldie Shadow Daily fans you will know what that means which recently ended but I recently discovered it, and it recently ended, which I was quite sad about. It was the Disney episode. One of them was the Disney episode. I remember, because I remember Joel doing the big, uh, like, Pride Rock with Chisholm and Bits. Which I thought was quite impressive. But that, so yeah, that happened. Um, Christmas was fun. Came back a bit earlier than I was planning on coming back after New Year. Ended up coming back a bit earlier for personal reasons. Uh, basically, one of the reasons, one of the prompting factors was the fact that our new oven was... Ah! That's something I forgot. See, I did say, like, I said that because of 2020, things I was going to completely forget about. In November, I nearly burnt my house down. 
how did I do this? So I might hear you ask. Well, I had quite a stressful time because basically what happened was, uh, yeah, I basically nearly burned my house down. Uh, I had a plastic crate, uh, like the sort of shop crates that your shopping would come in, on top of the oven. I'd forgotten that I'd left one on the hobs was on because um, I left it on and just turned the oven unit off because I had to use pliers to turn the hobs on because our oven knobs were broken at the time. So basically, that I left it on and I put the oven on to um, what did I do. Yeah, I put the oven on to cook some food, sausages, funny enough. Oh, I'll take that. That's funny uh, when you hear the rest of the story. Um, and then I went to check the sausages and then found the kitchen to be completely full of smoke. Um, basically, I couldn't get through to open the window. The We then put the... Um, I then put the crate, we managed to get it out and put it on the balcony. However, what then happened, what we then discovered was that the uh, the crate had caught fire had caught fire to some carpet that we had on the balcony and we had a small fire on the balcony as well as a lot of like um, yeah as well as a lot of like uh, smoke in our kitchen and we couldn't get to the window to open it so yeah that was a good night very stressed about that actually had to take the day off to school the next day because I was very shaken up and I just I felt like I was going to be, I kept mulling it over in my head and kept thinking about it and like spent way too much thinking about it and I had three periods the next day which is part of the reason why I just said, I just emailed and said I'm not coming in today. Uh, but that was also uh, because I didn't know any lessons I'd be missing but also it was the fact that, uh, what's the other thing? Oh yeah, it was the fact that, oh, what was it? I know what I am thinking, but I just can't. It was the fact that I had three periods, and I didn't really have anyone to talk to in those three periods, at least in the morning. So I would be sitting there by myself, thinking things through too much, and I didn't want to do that. So I took the day off, came back in on the Friday, and yeah. Then yeah, that's the that was why I ended up coming back on early, or one of the reasons, uh, the re personal reasons, but one of the reasons why I decided to come back early was the fact that we were getting a new oven. Uh, delivered for New Year's Eve it was uh, and I need to get the kitchen cleaned to sort it and help to supervise it coming in because mum's not very mum didn't really want to do it and I was there. I just thought you know man of the house turns of when I'm 18 now she'll be be nice so that happened and 2019 ended on a bit of a on a positive note we had a new oven which was very different and it is still confusing sometimes to me to work but it is a nice oven. It's a very nice oven. It's a bit smaller than the old one, but it's and we also don't know. It doesn't have a grill like on top. It actually is just one big unit uh, that you can then set to grill. Which I have. I'll be honest. I have set it to grill sometimes. And you open it and a whole load of smoke comes out. And I, I, I swallowed some of it and I was like, yeah, disgusting. Um, yeah. Funny story though about the um, about the sausages uh, that we were cooking that night when the, we. Basically, yeah, basically the oven got decommissioned. I don't know if I mentioned that. They had to um, decommission the oven so we couldn't use it. So for about a month and a half, we were relying on that microwave meal or takeaways, which really didn't help our takeaway obsession, but that's not the point. Um, what else happened? Oh, yeah. So basically, what we did, uh, we checked the sausages because we were, we were joking about it and we were joking. We, we thought... We said, how are the sausages below? Because the oven itself was still on. The hob had been switched off. The oven had been... Actually, no, the oven had been switched off of the, the plug socket. Uh, the, sw the switchboard. Um, sausages were perfectly cooked. So we all we all had a good laugh. I mean, we'd all been very... St I mean, I've been very stressed and said, Mum and everybody else. But we all had a good laugh about that when we realised the sausages were perfectly cooked. It was a nice little thing to find. Also, as well, it was quite sweet because there was a little boy that was flirting about in the hallway and he was getting quite excited at all the fire engines. I was like, I bought someone some joy and if I did nearly burn my house down. So that was my November. Perhaps a sign of things to come. Um, and actually, I'll tell you a story about that. I believed for a good while after this, 
in the T in a theory that I called the TV show theory. The reason why I called it the TV show theory is because of foreshadowing. Now, the night before this happened, this happened on a Wednesday. The Tuesday night, I had shut. Basically, my windows have the window itself. And then it's got like a little draft excluder slash eat, like a vent so that you can have the window shut but still have some air going out. The night before I shut that. Also, if you want to get even more crazy, I like to, well I used to, I don't really do it that much anymore, pretend that I would be filming a, um, filming like some scenes with my wallpaper roll that I pretend is a study cam. Uh, I've explained about this I think before at some point, if not, it's on my Twitter I've talked about it. She might be my personal Twitter I've talked about it. I don't know. But anyway, so I like to pretend that. And funny enough, as dark as it may sound, a few nights prior, I'd been pretending, or I'd been pretend filming uh, someone basically setting fire to their oven and committing suicide. Yeah, my jolly thoughts. We love that, don't we? Um, but yeah, I, and I was telling my teacher about this at school and he was like, hmm, that is interesting. But I was explaining to him why now basically I believed in this TV slash film universe idea because of the foreshadowing that basically happened. It was like, I almost imagine like when I did that, I was thinking back to when I shut the draft excluder. I'm going to call it a draft excluder. I don't think it is, but that's what I'm going to call it. Call it. Um, thinking back to when I shut the draft excluder, I almost imagine like, although I don't know, it doesn't really fit. You know the music in, um, oh, I forgot what game it is, but you know the press X to doubt meme. Uh, that music with the dun 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 dun. I almost imagine that playing. It's like, you shouldn't. Or like a bit of sinister music playing when I shut the window or the window's draft excluder. But yeah, that was basically the extent of my sorrow, sorrow, my sorrow in 2019. I had pretty good, uh, I think I've talked to you about this, but I had pretty good uh, A-level results for the first year. I came out with D-star, D-star D. No, D-star, D-star M, sorry. Um, and yeah, but then January here, and I did my exams, and I was a bit stressed because it was a stressful time but I got through them and I will tell you about my results but I won't tell you about that until just a little bit later on uh, well actually you won't have to wait long because I got my results in March um, so I got through January the main thing getting me through January was the fact that I had pantomime coming up which if you don't know I have talked about it before on my channel so I've uploaded videos about it on my channel uh, pantomime basically is a this thing that we do. I, I'm part of a society. I'm well, not strictly speaking, but I am kind of. I get credited as part of the front of house. But basically, I work with a society uh, once a year uh, in February half term that puts on pantomimes for people that might not feel comfortable in going to a professionally produced one. So people with um, disabilities, people with disabilities that are very visible slash that may cause them to, uh, for example, we have people sometimes that, um, we do have some pe people that will clap randomly, I think, it's, I think that's a tick, I'm not entirely sure, uh, but you know, people just shout out random words, just basically because of a condition that they have or a disability, uh, that basically wouldn't be not allowed because I think regular theatres are starting to get a bit more acceptant of that sort of thing but basically we want to run a, a place where everyone can feel comfortable and also the same goes for the people working in the society as well it's a completely like charitable society all the money that we raise for on the shows goes put gets put straight back into making the next event, next year's show uh, which could be on hold this year because of Covid, but well, next year, sorry. But it happens during the February half term, which if, you don't, if you're not um, from the UK or don't understand what that means, basically it's the week in February. And the way I always used to uh, talk, uh, note it was it was the week that went around Valentine's Day. That's not always the case anymore. But funnily enough, I got quite lucky. I went during the week before what would have been our actual February half term on work experience and it was work experience it was quite fun basically the, f the Birmingham half terms didn't line up with the half because it's in it's in Birmingham that I do it didn't line up with the half terms where I am from so I had to um basically my, my the pastoral person I was telling you about before he very kindly let me go on that work experience for the week uh, and it was quite fun. I actually really enjoyed it. 
uh, Panto Week is always great fun. But some things happened on Panto Week that I think were the start, sort of showing the start of 2020. At this point, we'd already had the Australian wildfires, which had been going on for weeks, and it was really tragic. I think they were starting to die down a bit. But then two things happened. There was a storm the week before Panto, and there was also a storm the week of Panto. It was There was a lot of storms. But I can't remember what night it was, but there was a night during that week, or it was the week after, when it was announced that Caroline Flack had committed suicide. And to be honest, I think genuinely, when I look back at all the shitty stuff that happened in 2020, because it was so early on, I kind of forget about it. It's mad how much shit has happened this year. And by no means, I may sound a bit like, like, like talking about this lightly and like laughing. I'm not laughing by any means, of course, that Caroline committed suicide. It was a horrible thing. I was completely in shock when I read it. I was, I don't mind telling you, I just completely was like, what the fuck? I didn't believe it at first because it was, I think it's the sun. I saw it pop up on my phone and I was like, I, I don't, I don't believe it. Actually, no. It was my, my dad said it, and my phone was upstairs charging. So I ran upstairs to grab my phone, and I looked it up. And sure enough, a lot of, like, viable news sources were talking about it. And then it kind of got confirmed, and it was spread everywhere. And I was like, and there was no, like, normally if something like that happens, you, you get, like, someone confirming it's fake, or, yeah, you know I mean, if it's a hoax. Or, for example, the big news corporations won't report on it. But... Everyone was talking about it, and it got to the point where it's like, this is real. And it took ages to sink in, but it kind of just was like, what the fuck? 2020 is a, 2020 was like a weird year. And it only, it only just started, and I felt horrible looking through Twitter that night, and reading about everything, and it was horrible really for me to look at everything and sort of see it. But then, looking back, that was only the beginning of 2020's wrath. So, that happened towards the end of February, I want to say. I can't remember exactly. Uh, And actually, my Twitter icon on my personal Twitter has been, ever since that, and still is the green ribbon, you know, the you know where the red uh, red ribbon, the yellow ribbon. It's the green ribbon, which is mental health support. So it's mental health awareness, and it still has that. It still is that, and it stays like that because that shocked me. I think like obviously I know that a lot have been going on in her life, and I don't want to get too much into politics and talking about these sorts of issues because there are lots of things were going on, and. It, it was shocking to hear about, but, yeah. It was a real shock to sort of read about, um, but yeah. But that happened, so, yeah, that happened, and obviously there was the storms that were going on, which were causing a lot of disruption in the UK. Then March hit, and the year was going badish. I mean, apart from my exams, well, my, I've been stressing a bit about my exams, but apart from that, the year had been going pretty shit, really. Um, then March hit, and well, during the February half term week, and basically when I was doing Panto, there was news spreading that the uh, coronavirus something that I didn't know anything about at this point, um, was there were some people who had, they'd found people in the UK that had cases of coronavirus, and I was, it, I was reading into it and looking at the news, and it sounded pretty bad. And then during pantomime week, they found the first person to have died from it, and then that number kept going up. And up, and then through to March, it hit a point where it kept going up. And the, then the advice came out about COVID, uh, or coronavirus, sorry. Schools uh, in Northern Ireland shut. And then Friday, 
the 13th of March, I was at school with a barking cough. I'd had it for about a week, uh, but I wasn't, I was kind of trying to push through. I had a lot on my plate. I couldn't, like, it wasn't, basically, no, my mum had said that it wasn't a persistent cough, even though I thought it was. So we were pushing through. But then, over the weekend, I started to get worse. And on Sunday night, my mum called up 111, and they told my mum that, although they didn't think I had COVID, uh, I think at that point it had been called COVID, um, although, yeah, because I remember the week I was reading about it in school, and I was like, I'm probably not going to call it COVID, I'm probably going to call it coronavirus, call it COVID now. Um, at that point, basically, the people on 111 said, although well, they didn't think I had COVID, it, my immune system was likely to still be weak anyway, so it would be it would be a better idea for me to take take the self isolate to protect my immune system just generally. So I self isolated, and then then came the Wednesday of that week that I was self isolating for. Gavin Williamson, oh well, actually no, before that happened, schools in Wales announced they were going to be closing from the next week. So did the schools in Scotland and Northern Ireland. Then it was announced, then it was rumoured that Gavin Williamson of England would follow suit later on, or even the next day. Later that evening, at 5.30, Gavin Williamson made a statement in the House of Commons, announcing that all schools in England will be closing and all 2020 summer exams will be cancelled. Schools will be closing practically immediately. So basically, I had been cut off. I I left on Friday the 13th, thinking I'd be back. But to be honest with you, it's now Sunday the 27th, 26th of September. Over six months later, only seven. And I still haven't been back. During that time, I got some good news. My exam results came in, uh, and I got a distinction in media, in one exam and then a merit in the other, but I'd come out with a distinction style no matter what, provided my coursework at least got a pass, so I was happy with that. Then in business, or in IT, I got a merit, and in, distinct, in business, I got a distinction. I got a pass in both my exams, so that was a bit of a, a bit of a letdown. But apart from that, I was okay. Um, but then, so basically, at that point, my overall grades were distinction, star, distinction, merit, and yeah, as you can probably appreciate, I wasn't particularly happy about that because I really wanted to get, and I didn't, because I didn't basically get the opportunity to move my. Um, business grade back up again which is what I wanted to try and do because I would have basically only had to reset the business exam which would have been good effects on then I run into another issue with coursework I couldn't do my coursework from home because I had no computer the school couldn't provide me one for um, liability reasons so I couldn't do my homework my coursework so a special request had to be put in, which I believe was granted. Then began this six month lockdown period, which is still kind of going on now. Things are not back to normal, really. I mean, you think about that. And then looking back, April, May, June, July, August, all kind of merged into one for me. There were very, very few things that happened in those months that stand out to me as, like, a moment, something that was important. I mean, COVID cases were going through the roof, deaths 
We're also going massively high. There was media frenzy. There was the whole thing about Dominic Cummings, which I'm not going to get into because I don't want to talk about politics. That's uh, one of the YouTube rules. Or the YouTuber sort of guide, not not YouTube official guidelines, but like it's sort of the unspoken one of the unspoken rules of YouTube. You don't talk about politics or religion. That was there was so much, and there was probably even more stuff um, going on. Uh, just generally, there is uh, there was other things happening which I'm not going to talk about because. I don't even like thinking about some of the stuff that other stuff happened. And then BLM happened and I can I no, I know I said I wasn't gonna talk about politics, but of course I completely stand in favour of Black Lives Matter and everything they stand for. But reading about everything, it, it just got too much. I had to take time away. I had to sort of isolate myself from the world in terms of what was going on because it was not affecting my mental health very well at all. I wasn't going outside much purely because of COVID. Um, my I wasn't talking to many people. Mainly I was to, I wasn't the only person I was really talking to vocally was the person the people from the shop and my mum. Yeah. But during that time two things happened. I discovered MCC or Minecraft Championships, which funny enough I have watched tonight. Um, the 10th MCC happened very recently. In fact, it happened literally uh, Saturday just gone. Uh, and actually, I have been making playlists for MCC vid- VODs uh, on my channel from MCC 7, I think. So if you want to go and have a look at them, have a look on my channel at the playlists. But you might be thinking, Joe, what is MCC or Minecraft Championship? Well, hence the name. It's a Minecraft event that takes place usually once a month, but this month it's taken place twice, uh, where YouTubers or streamers come together and compete in eight mini games. There's 40, 40 players in 10 teams of four. And each compete, they all compete in eight mini games and a final battle between the top two scoring teams. There's more information on the Nox Crew website, which I will, if I remember, link in the description below. Um, and yeah, MCC is a big event. Uh, I discovered it in late April. I found on the Knox Crew's YouTube channel a admin stream for it, and I was like, "Oh, what's this?" So I sat and watched the admin stream, not live for MCC number uh, MCC number eight. It was not MCC eight. It was MCC four. It was the Easter one, and then I started watching people's perspectives. I was like, "This is a cool event. I like this." Then I thought, I want to watch MCC number five when it happens in May. Wait, no. I think I'm making. I think I'm messing this up. Yeah, I am. MCC one happened in November of last year. MCC two took place in February, and ever since then. Apart from MCC 10, they've taken place monthly. So two was in February, three was in March, four was in April. I think I watched the I think I watched the admin stream of three, and was going to watch. I was gonna watch. Uh, no, no, no! I'm getting so confused. I really am getting so confused here. Uh, four, I watched the. No, 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 no. Yeah, so I watched the admin stream of free back, and I was going to watch the four admin stream live. But then I'd also picked that night to do my own Eurovision event, which I had been planning for some months, and basically it was giving me something to do during the lockdown period, which at that point, no, none of us knew how long it was going to go on for. So I was kind of, you know, just working away on that. Uh, and basically you tried to watch both, and it kind of worked out, right? But anyway, yeah, so MCC was kind of the thing that I look forward to the most each month, and I still do. And I still think that even once things go back to normal, it will still, I'll still look forward to it. MCC has been something brilliant that has brought so many people joy during this very strange and mysterious period that we live in. It's been a lot of joy for a lot of people, and 
I really do think that it's down to uh, Scott, who is the event organiser, and the Knox crew, who are the obviously the designers and builders of the event, for making such a fantastic event that's kept us very captivated and engaged for the past couple of months. So that happened, yeah. MCC happened. Um, I watched MCC... Basically, from MCC 5, I watched all the events. I watched the admin stream of MCC 5 live, same with 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, which happened, actually, when I'm recording this, about six and a half hours ago. It started at 8 p.m. BST. Uh, actually, no, seven and a half hours ago, because it's now 25 past three in the morning on Sunday the 27th of... Uh, 26th of September. Um... But yeah, so that basically happened. But there's a story to tell between what happened between MCC 9 and MCC 10. But before that, what happened with my results on results day? Well, I got my results as I expected and I shared them proudly on Facebook that I had a distinction, star, distinction, merit, which is the equivalent of A star, A, C. So I was happy. Then they go the government did their U-turn on A-level results, and that somehow changed my result in business. Meaning that overall in business, I got a distinction. Meaning that I came out of my exams with a, a D star, D, D, which is the equivalent of A star, A, A, which I then promptly updated my Facebook post, and I got even more congratulations from it. And basically I put like a little Thanks for the congratulations, but I have more news, and I basically tried to one. Then, um, then the sort of, the challenge began with starting uni. And I have learned a very big, big, big thing from university, and I've only been there for two weeks, and I learned this before I'd even started university. I sent an email to the, my university's engagement team. Uh, and basically just asked a question. I sat and waited, and a week later, I didn't have a response in my inbox. That's important. I didn't have a response in my inbox. You might be able to guess where this is going. So I sent another email back, basically saying, look, it's been a week. I asked you quite an important question. I, I know you're probably busy at the moment, but can I have a response? And yet another week goes by, and I don't get a response. And I actually didn't get a response the second time. Well, no, actually... Yeah, I did, but I'll tell you about that in a little bit. Then... I realised... The day that I was due to start university... That a massive amount of emails that I'd been sent had gone into my junk folder... Including links to access important stuff for university. How to access our online learning platform. Which I couldn't do before. Despite trying. And also. The response to my original email. Which had been sent an hour after I'd sent my first email. As you can imagine, I was pissed, not at the university, but myself, for not looking in that junk folder in the first place. But it didn't light, I was using Outlook, and it didn't light up, it didn't indicate to me at all. Basically, I was quite annoyed, as you can imagine. Because um, I'd been stressing out, and stressing out, and thinking about dropping out, and I'd been having stress, because I got my timetable sent through, which was sent through via an online link. When I first got my timetable, it was rammed to high hell for whatever something had happened and it was completely mad there was overlapping set things there was everything i had a small meltdown i actually did i was crying i was so upset and just i was like i'm, I'm not doing it i'm not doing it i was talking to someone on my on, on mage master's discord about it and i was just like i don't want to do it and then they pointed out you do realise that this is probably just a... Like, you know what I mean? It's probably just a dodgy timetable. So I, so I sent an email to the timetabling team. And the next time I checked my timetable, I saw that it had been changed and it was much emptier. 
So I, I sent um what person who I'd been talking to on the Discord who had seen the big one uh, a message to tell them to check the link again. And they looked at it and were like, good grief, that is much, uh, much emptier. And I was like, yeah, it's much emptier. But what really annoys me is that perhaps if I'd been told that it was likely to do that, I would have not stressed out as much. Also, they give you so much to read when you start uni. Like, I, I haven't read everything. Mainly because I didn't have time slash the energy or the patience. I didn't want... Basically, they probably could have said it somewhere. But they just give you so much to read. That, like, I couldn't be bothered. Not be bothered. Because that sounds bad. I read some of it. But there was just so much. And I'm, I was working on a phone at this point. I still am. I still haven't got my student finance cleared for other reasons that I will talk about in a bit. But, yeah. So, basically, I was really pissed off about that, as I'm sure you can appreciate. Um, it was not anyone at the university's fault again. It was my own fault. The second email that I sent ask, a week later asking about a reply... I got any reply to that this week. As in, the week just gone, because obviously this is going out on the Monday. Why it took so long to get a reply to that email, I don't know. But basically, the day of the um, I started, I uh, realised that I was going to have to call someone, because I couldn't, basically, there was not, I couldn't sit and not call anyone. I needed to make a phone call, and I didn't want to do it. And every time I tried... Either I ended up putting the phone down because I was stressed or agitated, and then either that, or I ended up not getting through because the line was so busy. But then we decided to call the welfare team, and we called the welfare team, and I, the person answered, and I just put the phone down on the side and ran. I, I'm not even joking. It was stupid to think about it. I put the phone down and I literally ran away. Shut, slammed my bedroom door and walked away. I did not want to do it. I was that stressed about the entire thing. I didn't... I didn't give a sh care that the door slam probably got picked up by the phone call. I just went in my room and I had a small... small, small another small meltdown. So that's like... Three meltdowns at this point at the university? And basically it is all due to communication things. And one thing I will say, I don't blame the university really at all for the issues. The situation is very difficult for everyone at the moment because of COVID. And I think the other issues I have in my life generally, and then my, men my mental issues as a whole anyway, didn't help the situation. Didn't help to not make me feel angry, upset, annoyed. And I had to remind myself when I made the phone call that it was not the people at the engagement team office's fault that things were happening to me the way they were. These people were just people trying to do their jobs and basically I couldn't vent at them. It wasn't their fault. That evening, out of the blue, I decided, you know what? I'm going to call up the engagement team. It was needed. But I was also like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's do it. So I got my mum's phone. And I sat on hold for about 57 minutes. Eventually I got someone to pick up. And I told them about all my issues that I had. And they gave me a lot of things to, to, to basically act upon those things. And basically solved all my problems. In, one of the other issues though I did have when I got my new timetable back. Even though that it had been um, refreshed. I was put down for on-campus study and I've been sent an email asking to clarify via a link basically whether I was going to be studying on or off campus this term because of COVID. And I'd very clearly indicated to the university that I wasn't planning on studying on campus. I then sent an email off very angrily basically because at this point I hadn't found the other emails that they'd sent me. So basically I'd sent off a big email basically saying I wasn't happy because I wasn't. And I didn't want to call anyone because, because of my autism, I don't like the idea of doing that. Um, but yeah, so basically that happened. I I ended up having to make a phone call, which, as I say, was something that I didn't want to do. 
But, yeah. One of the things was, yeah. So, basically, what the guy on the phone told me was that... Because I'd indicated that I was wanting to attend study off campus, uh, it was fine. I mean, attendance was, wasn't really being monitored that much at the moment anyway, given the current situation. Um, yeah. So, basically, he said, just look at the stuff on Aula and watch that for the sessions you're missing. I was like, okay, that's fine. Thank you very much. And left it at that. Later that week, my timetable got updated and everything was fine and dandy. However, my student finance still hadn't been cleared. And it wasn't student finance's fault. It was the fault of the university, which at the same time wasn't their fault because it was just generally how things happen. Basically, the way the, I, the way the student finance works is they will only give you your student finance if the university has clarified that you're a student at their university, for obvious reasons. The university's procedure is to clear... They will clarify that you're a student to student finance when you get your ID card. I still do not have my university ID card. Because of... Because I'm... I'm relatively poor person i do not own a passport or a driver's license i've not i don't have a need for one because i've never been abroad and i don't own one basically those were the big ideas that they would want and the only other way they would basically the way the other option during normal circumstances would be for you to come in on campus to an appointment to show my bring in some like other ideas and to uh, have my picture taken and have my ID card sorted. Because of COVID, I can't do that. So I've been going in a back and forth email exchange for week, for the past two weeks, trying to get something sorted. And I called the engagement team up on Friday night, just gone, and they're looking into it as like a matter of urgency because it's basically now starting to affect my studies. Again, just want to emphasize this is not me criticizing the uni at all. We're all trying to adapt to the, the ever-changing circumstances. It just so happens that I've kind of... This has kind of happened. Um, the lady on the phone that I spoke to on Friday was really nice. And basically really understood my issues um, and tried to help me to get them sorted. Um, but yeah, hopefully that'll be sorted soon and I can get all the stuff I need for uni. But, and basically delivered as soon as possible. Um, I was looking at, basically I've set up an Amazon order of all the stuff I need to get for uni from Amazon at least and it was like, this order will come in four day, four delivery, separate deliveries and it was like, love that and of course the two most important things, my desk and a chair they can take the longest to come so, we love that uh, but yeah, so that was my sort of issue with uni I'm two weeks into uni at this point and I'm kind of still feeling a bit overwhelmed by everything because while I'm, I've got my own issues to deal with now I've started university, but the issue with that is, I'm still like trying to deal with issues from before I started university, so it's all it's all going downhill basically. <laughs> but things are starting to look up, and I'm hoping that by Monday on Monday I should get a response from someone about um, what's going on. So obviously by the time this video comes out. I should hopefully know some more about my uh, what's going on with my university stuff. Um, but let's talk a bit about the channel because I've, I've I have my um, channel loaded up on my Xbox. I've been uploading quite a few interesting videos. I think mainly Mage Masher content. In fact, pretty much all of my videos have been Mage Masher content. I did my no. Aha! Let's talk about this as well because another shit thing happened to me recently. Um, I announced I was coming back to YouTube, so I decided to, um, in March, in April, August, sorry, uh, and also, I, and the plan was to come back to YouTube on the 7th of August. So I uploaded a video called No Signal Error 7820, which was meant to be 7th of the 8th, 2020. Get the, the naming scheme. But what I also did was I also uploaded basically all the videos that I had, um, I would have um basically i removed a load of videos from my channel in late december because of um copper which was it feels like years ago at this point but there was all stuff about copper going on and i didn't want to get fined so i removed a load of stuff from my channel and put it on vimeo uh all that stuff is now i believe actually back on now i think i've actually re-removed it again because of what happened but yeah basically i re-uploaded a load of stuff and got two community guidelines or got a community guidelines strike i I looked into it and I saw, oh look, this is 
It's weird. So I appealed the community guideline strike. I promptly got another. I actually got I got a second community guideline strike. Uh, now I've got a com community guideline a video that have been removed for community guideline violations. Two of them. I then appealed one of them and got a strike for appealing it. When I got basically, uh, I basically got a reply saying I got the strike within about ten minutes. Not even that. In fact, it wasn't even that. It was like two minutes. And the reason why I got the strike was because my content was spam or misleading. And I'm, I, what I was wondering was, was it because I just re-uploaded half, or re-public, public, remade public half the videos on my channel? Not half of them, but like a quarter, a good quarter of them. And there's about 500, 600 videos on my channel. So you imagine like a good like 120 or so videos I've made public again. So I was wondering, was that why? So I got in touch with Team YouTube on Twitter and remarkably enough, I got a reply. And I wasn't expecting a reply because it felt, you know what I mean, it didn't feel like I would get a reply. But I got a reply and they basically said, we'll look into this for you. And then I got a tweet back, which again I wasn't also expecting, but I got a tweet back saying, we've looked into this, we've realised that these, this claim was false and we're going to re reinstate the videos and rear the strike. And I was like, great. And I got an email to the same effect, telling me that it was good. And I was talking to people on Major's Discord, and I was like, because I told them about the original strike, and I was like, yay, I'm good. Because um, basically, the community guideline strike stops you from learning for seven days, and I was playing on stuff. We coming back to YouTube uh, about less than a week after I posted the uh, the teaser video, which was the no signal video. However, I then waited the videos didn't get reinstated the strike didn't disappear so i tweeted at youtube again they then said they'd look into it again they then came back to me and said they decided that the videos did violate community guidelines um and that the strike would be worth standing and i was like but i was yeah, so basically they flip-flopped back and forth and then basically ultimately ended up deciding that the, command, the community guideline stroke was valid. The videos haven't been reinstated. Thankfully, I have backups of them. There were two of the uh, videos that I backed up on Vimeo. So I was very happy that I had them backed up on Vimeo. If you want to go watch them, they are on Vimeo. I will try and remember to link my Vimeos in the description. But yeah, that was pretty shitty for me. I was a bit pissed about that, as you can, I'm sure you can appreciate. Because basically I don't like being m mucked about by YouTube. But then I came back with the update video, which I had actually recorded before I got the community guideline strike. And I was talking all about how I was excited to come back to YouTube. I'm still not sure if I'm going to stay on YouTube anymore because of the uh, community guideline strike. But then I uploaded my first major Mansion compilation. I've been working on my Solid Potter major Mansion compilations. It was him in stealth. With part one. And it was very, it was very well received. It actually currently has 45 views, and it was uploaded one month ago. And then I also one week later uploaded part two of that compilation, which has 40 views. Then I got I was re made played through a Barbie Detective Mystery Cruise that that Barbie game, and I'd seen a request. I'd been working on the video for that. But I'd started with Mage's older playthroughs of that game, because he's played through the game at least twice before. He's never done a full playthrough, but he's done like a biggish playthrough. So I started with them. I um I watched through them and I ended them together. And then someone said on the Discord whether Mage is going to make like a highlight reel of the series. And he tagged me in it, because obviously he knows he's seen my videos or is aware of my videos at least. And basically, so that's up to the, the micro, or Minecart Alliance, as I'm known in the Major's Discord. And I said, did someone talk about Barbie videos? And I shared a screenshot of the uploaded video on my channel, sitting, waiting to go public. And I tagged the person that had asked, and they were like, ooh, very nice. And I was like, yep. And I, was, and I messaged them privately, I was like, you want it now? Because I was, I was, it was ready to go, and he's like, you want to release it early? And I'm like... I'll release it. You want it? I'll release it. So then I released that. Then I released another video called Is This Better Mr. Hater Elder? Basically, it was a meme because uh, one of Mage's fans 
who'd found one of my videos, who I know quite well from the Discord, Elder, had commented saying that, what was it? He basically commented saying, from one of my Lock the Minecart compilations, where he just goes to the cross button or lock the minecart, he commented saying it's annoying that he's, me that he's not finishing his sentence. So, what I did was I took the entire sentence, the cross button or lock the minecart, to help to collect some of the more difficult canuts. And I made that loop and loop for 10 minutes, like the first lock the minecart video was. And I basically feed the entire video around Elder being a hater. He wasn't. He said he found the video quite funny. And I was like, I uh, put the bit at the end was saying, is this better? That video has 30 views in four weeks. I'm actually quite pleased that one. The, uh, the first Barbie compilation has 35 views in one month. Then I also uploaded three weeks ago a second part of the Barbie compilation that was a, um, a video basically of highlights of the newer series. Then, then something interesting happened and I'm going to quickly jump into this player so you might hear something in the background. Mm -hmm. Yep, there you go, you just heard it. But then I decided to work on, start working on a new project. It was the Mage Masher singing Barbie Girl video that I started working on privately. Then I started talking to someone, a moderator from Mage's Discord, and I started to talk, to, it was Anne from Mage's Discord, and I started to talk about to her about the project and she was interested in it, and we were talking back and forth about ideas back to get Mage saying certain words. Then I got a couple of other people involved from Mage's Discord, including Perilous Platypus, who was very helpful in helping me get certain words very, very sneakily. And in fact, when I posted the video in the self-promotion channel on Mage's Discord, I also shared the clip and I said, because um, Mr. Perilous had a brilliant idea, because we needed knees, because the song goes, um, I can beg on my knees. Uh, so Mr. Platypus had a very good idea to ask Mage, using a Ask Me Anything, uh, one of the Twitch redeems, how do you say the word knees? And what I did was I posted it with a, uh, I posted it in Mage's Discord under the self-promotion channel, and I was saying, how do you pronounce the word knees, question mark, with a, like a thinking face. And and people were laughing at it. I posted the um, the video as a whole, and people were like, "Oh god!" And Mage was like, "Oh my god!" It's like, "How long did this take?" And I was like, "Too long." But yeah, basically, I posted it. It was uploaded six days ago. It was actually uploaded last Sunday at nine p.m. BST, uh, and it has currently got forty-six views, and it's like I say, it's six days old. So I'm very happy with it. Some nice comments on it as well, but I had to upload it on a separate YouTube channel purely because I was worried about getting a potential copyright strike from it. So I put it on an, like another YouTube channel so I didn't have to worry about getting copyright struck, just in case. But yeah, that's basically what I've been doing this year. That is basically a quickish recap of the past 12 months. Also, I want to say, if you haven't subscribed to Mage Masher, yeah, Please do go do so. I will link, try and remember to link him in the description. He's a fantastic content creator. He's absolutely blown up this year. I mean, I remember, I think he was on about 9k when I first started following him. Uh, he's recently, then he, I remember him hitting 10k. Um, and then he hit, he's recently hit 17k. He's actually currently on 17.4k. So please do go follow him and subscribe to him. He is fantastically hilarious. And I think... Uh, you may have already seen the compilation videos that I've done of him, and I do plan to do more of them in the future. I'm trying to think about ideas, because I want to... I don't just want to make... Like, the stealth compilations felt very easy, and I kind of want to do something a bit creative, because one of the compliments I got from um, the Barbie Girl video was it was a very creative idea. And basically, it wasn't just making a compilation, which is quite easy. So, I'm trying to think about unique and interesting ideas for that. In terms of what the next video I'm going to be uploading is, I'm not sure, because I'm, I'm actually not, because 20, I want to do more mage compilations, as I've said, I have an idea to revisit something that I've done before, and done again, since then, but now I want to do it again, and now hopefully I can record it in a better way, so that'll be fun, that'll probably be coming out, I'm hoping, the anniversary of that is like November, 
but I don't know if I'm going to hold it off for that long. As soon as I can record it, I probably want to do it. So it might be coming out within the next couple of weeks. It's one of the things that I'm sort of waiting on getting my computer for. So that's something to look forward to. I mean, I've just not said anything about what it is at all. Uh, I may also do another update video at some point talking about this. Podcasts? I don't know whether I'm going to do another podcast anytime soon. Unless there's something I can think I want to talk about. That's the thing about these podcasts. Like, they kind of only really get done very infrequently because there's not really much to talk about. Uh, I suppose I could, if you have any ideas for podcasts I could do, let me know down in the conversation below. Uh, I really want to do a podcast with someone, like as a guest podcast. So if you guys have any ideas about someone who I could ask to do a podcast with, uh, do let me know. Um, because this is honestly quite fun to sort of just sit and talk about what's been going on in my life for the past year and honestly i'm very grateful that you guys some of you guys even listen to these i mean the last podcast has 40 views the podcast before that has 10 for, that sounds really weird and the one before the, yeah for some reason the most recent podcast has the most views out of all four which to me makes no sense and that title was so much to talk about so i don't know what i'm gonna call this one but anyway, guys, that, I think, is going to wrap it up for today's podcast. I do hope you have enjoyed today's podcast. If you have enjoyed it, please don't forget to like it. If you are new around here, please subscribe. Because I do do videos like this and others uh, quite free, uh, quite more frequently now. The reason, by the way, why I didn't upload much uh, recently is the Barbie Girl video. Making it was tedious enough. I had to download, I think I, I, I put the number exact number in the Discord. Uh, so if you want to find out, have a little look in there. But... I think it was something like 19 gigabytes worth of files for the Barbie Girl video, mostly for small little clips of it. I also had about 72 renders of the project because of the way how my editing software works on my phone. It's it's very it was very convoluted and basically it was hard for me to edit that and then try and work on something else. Plus I didn't really have any ideas and I kind of was starting to gear away from doing some of the ideas I come up with anyway. I may do some of them in the future. But, yeah. But anyway, guys, that is going to be it for today's video. I really do, do, do have enjoyed If you have enjoyed, like I say, please don't forget to like it. If you're on your idea, please subscribe for more content like this on the channel. This has been quite nice to sort of get things off my chest. So, I'm probably am going to do another podcast at some point soon. Maybe not um, immediately. Uh, I do also want to do some random vlogs. Slash a se- I've been wanting to do a series about university for a while now. So I might do a series talking about uh, the application process for me for uni and also like, the first couple of weeks of uni and living through c- a c- going to uni during COVID is something that I think is um, something worth talking about perhaps. Once again, I do just want to mention that the issues that I talked about with the university experience in this podcast, I uh, don't blame the university for because everyone is struggling at the moment to try and work out how we do things in this new world that we're living in. Hopefully things will be getting sorted soon. Uh, we'll be able to get hopefully get a vaccine sorted. And But honestly, I'm not expecting that to happen before the end of the year. So I think for the next couple of months, so that's probably even half a year, if not more, we're still going to be living like we are now. And this is kind of the new normal. And when we can finally go back to normal of being able to hold hands with people, shake hands with people, do whatever, when Covid is finally sort of a long and distant memory, then yeah, it'll be a strange time. But what I think we all obviously mustn't forget is the amount of people that have sadly died from Covid or due to Covid. Um, But yeah, on that somewhat sad and somber note, I'm going to end the podcast. Thanks for listening, guys. I do hope you enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next podcast, guys. Thanks for listening, and goodbye!